Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, today we're going to be hitting a hard topic. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Really? What did that guy ever do? <sighs> you know, he, like... did, he did way more than Bill Nye, that's for sure. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. So here's the thing. We dogged on Bill Nye and yeah. then ended up being like, it's actually pretty good. And then I had the same out, like the same look at Neil deGrasse or, uh, or Neil deGrasse Tyson, where I'm like, "This guy's done nothing ever, and yeah. he's so famous." But I think what it is with both of these cats is they've done a, a very good service to the engineering and science communities through their personalities and the things that they do that aren't actual accomplishments. I feel like you really just stole like the end right there. No. Like it's called bookending, James. Is like, it? I'll say it at the beginning, and I'll repeat that at the end. Okay. Well, let's talk about his early years. All righty. I titled this "The Early Years of Little Neely." Oh. Because doesn't that sound right? Yeah. So born in fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. So that makes him fifty-nine years old as of today. Wow. He is like your age. Well, I, I don't know about that. Give but or take. Go on. Did you see that his mom is a? gerontologist i have no i'm assuming that that's a geriatrics person so i looked into it and it's apparently the study of the social cultural psychological cognitive and biological aspects of aging so he had some pretty smart parents yeah so mom was pretty smart there dad was a sociologist the human resource commissioner for new york city and the first director for the harlem youth opportunities unlimited this cat grew up in the bronx yeah he grew up in the bronx how cool is that yeah and he went to public school can you believe that public school whoop whoop you were a public schooler right no I was you not. weren't you no. weren't riffraff like no me? no I, it's no I, I was a public schooler but i wasn't like a city schooler so there's a difference like city of pittsburgh schools and then like regular like suburban public schools okay well if you say so fair enough fun fact you Shoot. ready for it he was the captain of his high school wrestling team. Yeah, apparently he was quite the athlete. Yeah, I, I bet he was a heavier weight, though, don't you think? I don't know. I saw some pictures he's of him pretty when he was younger. I mean, he was, I mean he's, he's in decent shape. Fun fact number two. Shoot. While he was captaining the team, he was also the editor-in-chief of the, the Physical Science Journal. See, so you know what makes me mad? What? So I'm one of those people where I typically have, like, one good skill at a time. Do you? Right. And you get these guys where not only are they good athletes, but they're smart, they're funny, yeah, they're, they're articulate, they have yeah. all these... Cr it's like, come on. That too. Like, you know, it's like, like me, I was funny. That was, at least I thought... What happened? I thought I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was never particularly a good athlete. So I, I, I just feel like whenever you see these people that are like overly blessed and endowed with all of these great skills and abilities i just feel like that's a little unfair i agree just saying share the wealth neil yeah. gosh did you see that he got interested in astronomy at nine yeah which is kind of silly who and, does that and he got interested because he went to the planetarium where he eventually worked yeah the hayden hayden planetarium in new york yeah, it's a right? part of the rose center for earth and science i oh, believe of course it is but who does that at nine i was like playing with gi joe's I uh, was a strong. Yeah, I was a, I was a heavy into GI Joes, but yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was interesting, but I I don't ever remember like having like a passion for it at that age. Yeah, I also thought this was interesting, and this ties back to other episodes we've done. He studied astronomy all through his teenage years because that's what you do because that's fun, mm -hmm. and he gave lectures at about like the topic. Sixteen. 15. Yeah, that's crazy. And not only that, but our old friend Carl Sagan heard about this, and uh, tried to recruit him to Cornell, even spending the day with him at seven, when he was 17. Trying but he, to but I'm to pretty sure this. he said no eventually. So I don't know what happened for that. Like, why would you say no to Carl Sagan for this and then end up going to old crappy Harvard instead? Well... Maybe well, that was like his safety school. He's he went like, to Man. quite a few schools, so and they were all way better than the schools you and I went to. Oh, yeah. Like, way better. So that's one of the things I do want to make clear here, and I have it in my notes somewhere, is that I, I keep saying he's done nothing and, like, just kind of ragging on the guy. He's way smarter than oh. me. He's smarter than you and I combined e e and, like, tripled. Like, yeah. I get it. I'm just saying, you know, for all the fame, what has he done? Yeah, well, and I, 
I don't know. I, I I feel like sometimes whenever you have that much smarts, like you kind of stumble over yourself sometimes. I, I think that does happen too. Yeah. So we went to to Harvard for a physics major. Harvard. Right? Uh, also, you know, he is an athlete. He was on the crew team his freshman year, and he lettered in wrestling his senior year. So again, yeah, makes you know, me mad. share the wealth. Yep. Uh, he's also into dance. Did you see that? I did. I did. Ballet, jazz, Afro-Caribbean, and Latin ballroom. I saw an old picture of him in like the dance uniform, like with the dance team. Dude was ripped. So I had a fun fact I was going to say for later, oh, but since okay. you're talking yeah. about it, while well, he was at University of Texas, of course, he's a starving student, right? Right. Uh, he didn't do it, but he actually considered, uh, because of his experience in dance and his physique, he considered becoming a male dancer. Really? Like, a exo- I, I like, like an exotic male dancer. Interesting. He ended up not doing it, thank goodness, because, I mean, who knows what would have happened with his career. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he, he almost became a male dancer. He'd probably be really good at that, too. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Because why wouldn't he be? Did you see that when he was at Texas in Austin? I like Austin. Mm-hmm. Uh, his professors, because he didn't spend a lot of time in the labs, were kind of like, maybe you should get a different career. Maybe this one isn't for you. Yeah. Which I thought that was kind of cool. So he got his so he, he got his master's in Austin, and then he got his MPhil, uh, I don't even know which is, is apparently a thing, at Columbia in astrophysics in 89. So, I mean, in 89... You were basically an adult by then, right? Almost. So he hasn't been working all that long. No, so no. So when I keep saying he's done nothing, he still has time. He does. He definitely does. Yeah. So and I, I, I consider those the, the younger years of Neil. Well, he also went to Princeton. Oh. Uh, Princeton. Not sure what degree he got there specifically. He worked but there as well. Yeah, so he worked at University of Maryland. So all the universities he's, he's worked at, he worked at University of Maryland, Princeton, and then the, the Planetarium. So those yeah. are like his official job titles. Oh, those are his official yeah. job titles. So a couple other, I don't know if these are early things, but okay. uh, back in 2001, uh, President George W. Bush appointed this. him to the Commission on the Future of the United States Aerospace Industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in 2014, he served on the President's Commission on Implementation of the United States Spl- Space Exploration Policy. I thought that better was known 2004. As, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, 2004. Okay. Uh, better known as the Moon, Mars, and Beyond Commission. I like that. That makes it sound more relatable. I bet he came Way up more. with the name for that, I'm sure too. He did. Because I'm all sure these he other did. eggheads were like the worst, and he was being charismatic. Yeah. Because that's what he does. Uh, also, while he was doing those things, he was still working at the planetarium, so right? I, I got a question about this. Oh, okay. So, how do you have like this full time job? He's the director at this planetarium joint up in New York, the Hayden place, right? Yeah. Shortly after getting hired, too. Yeah. It's a full time job, right? So you're there. He was overseeing a $200 million renovation. Okay. Yeah. It's a full time job, 40 hours a week minimum, yeah. right? Minimum. How are you doing? And like, like, I, like, I want my boss to say, yeah, you know what, Luke? I want you to go and do this other thing while you have this job and make all this extra money. So, so maybe it's more like a notoriety thing, like because he was on those commissions that made him more popular at the planetarium. I don't know, but I just don't know how you do these many, this many, th- yeah, yeah, this many things. It's just so confusing. So I think it's kind me. of like being on a board of directors. They're like, to get on a board, you need to be on a board, and then you'll start getting more offers to be on other boards. Oh, and then you get That's paid what to I need be to all. Do. Yeah, you need to get. Get on a board, and then you'll be rich. You know what? I need to take a break from all of this anger. So let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. I'm assuming it's NASA. No? no? I thought Neil was just going to sponsor us straight up. He's got dance money. He's he's got the dance money. (laughs) All his singles. Uh, No, but we do have a shout-out. So... uh, Ted S. emailed. Good old Teddy. Way back in the day. I mean, I don't even remember. No. I mean, he emailed recently. But way back in the day, I asked the question, what is the powdered metal capital of the world? Don't tell me he knew it. And he knew it. St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Your your hometown. Yeah. This was like a zillion episodes ago. And so I was like, man, good job. How do you know about uh, St. Mary's? And he's like, I Googled it. 
So that made me feel a whole lot less good was, about that. I didn't realize that was a Googleable topic. Apparently, is it Googleable is. a word? I, it should be, if not. Okay. So, anyways, that's our shout out for the week. But uh, I would like to say our reviews have been rolling in. So if you'd like to, head over to iTunes or wherever you listen and uh, write us a quick review and say how great we are. And remember to press the subscribe button if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have. And if you give us proof, you will receive some of the sweetest stickers I've seen. Probably the sweetest I've ever seen. Yeah. Email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com and show us that you subscribed. You will receive some of these stickers. You'll get the hookup. Many people have already, and they are the best. I agree. All right, so moving on. um, I had had a fun fact all queued up for this. You ready? Yep. He didn't want to count planets at the planetarium, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. He wanted to group like objects together, meaning uh, Pluto would be grouped with other similar objects and not be counted as the ninth planet. Okay. Some credit him, or a lot credit him, with removing it from the pla- as a planet. Mm. This resulted in, this is basically my favorite thing I heard, this resulted in him getting a lot of hate mail. Much of it from children. <laughs> you do well, hate mail from kids. I love it. I don't, <sighs> like you said, yeah. Like it's. it's I'm going to talk about this later. Yeah, you'll talk about it later. Yeah. So in 2009, this is. I think this is where he starts his transition from. I'm trying to be a smart guy to Neil deGrasse Tyson. That I feel, we know I, I today. feel like he did something before that, though. Oh, go ahead. So in 2007, right before oh. 2009, uh, he was chosen to be a regular on the History Channels. The Universe. Oh. Did you ever watch that? I didn't watch The Universe. Yeah, it was a pretty interesting show on the History Channel, uh, and it was basically you know all about the universe. And the cool thing about the TV show was they had these, um, and this was back in 2007, so I can't imagine if they did it again now. They didn't know much about the universe. They though. had amazing graphics, because obviously this was a lot of you know CGI and you know animations. It wasn't actual photographs and videos of you know depths of the universe. But yeah, it was a, an amazing, amazing show, and just he was explaining black holes and gravity and what the galaxies were, and it was a really interesting show. So that was his, so that this was is, his real start. This is probably where they were like, wow, this guy isn't awkward in front of the camera. Yeah. Maybe we could use him. Like most astrological... Astrophysicists? Astrologists. Okay, we'll go with astrologists. What was it? Astrological? (laughs) I don't know. All right. In 09, though, he started a one-hour radio talk show called Star Talk. It's a podcast, actually. Well, Similar to us. It is now. So it was with Lynn Coplitz. And I want to give this one a shout out because okay. it's kind of sad. It only lasted 13 weeks. Oh. So not everything he does succeeds. Okay. But then they brought it back in 2010 and replaced him, replaced Lynn with other co-hosts that were comedians like Sarah Silverman oh, and okay. other people, which that kind of blows my mind. And now it is available on a podcast, which is still going. And surprisingly, it has more reviews than we do. Eh, that does not surprise me. They get a worse average star rating. They do. Suck on that, nice. Neil. Yeah. <laughs> so that was something. Uh, do you have anything else you wanted to talk about other than all of these other like awards and so a couple shows things? And so uh, if you remember way back in the day, you probably don't remember Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Uh, I, I vaguely remember it. So Carl Sagan had this show called The Cosmos that he did. So in 2014, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I, another thing, too. Sorry. I'm going to have two rants. My first rant is, why does he get the triple name? Why isn't he just Neil Tyson? I'm just... Okay, sorry. Maybe... I don't know. I don't know. So uh, back in 2014, he helped revive uh, the Cosmos, where he was actually the presenter on the Cosmos. So they basically redid the series, uh, and he was the actual host of it. So, uh, And had there been another series, he probably would have handed that off, he said. So um, interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. I did want to give a little comment on the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing. Uh, I believe that the deGrasse thing was a maiden name of a grandparent or a grandmother. Okay. And I said, good for you, because my middle name also falls into that category. So I feel like Neil and I are practically brothers. Eh, 
Think about that. I don't think so. No? Okay. I just, it, it's, I don't know. I, I have issues with people that go by single names. Like George R.R. R. Martin. Do you think you could just drop the R.R. and he could just be George Martin? And then he sounds really plain and boring and no one buys his books? I feel like it's a stage name. It's, it's, it's like Cher. And... You don't like Cher? Yeah. Madonna? Yeah. It's like, I, I, I don't know. What I mean, if you just start going by Luke? I usually do. Well? You got Luke. Come on. <laughs> All right. Anyways, All right. he did manage 20 honorary. Oh, and this is something I wanted to talk about. He managed 20 honorary doctorates, including Yale and Penn. So what I want to know. 20. When you say manage, what do you mean? Like he received them? He's received them. Okay. Meaning like, I don't know why you get them. And this is what I wanted I to think ask when, about. I think whenever you speak at a commencement, they give you one. So this is what I'm thinking, is that we need to aim to get some of those honorary doctorates, don't you think? There's a boatload of them. I mean, it's like... There's so many. Yeah, he's... I, I, I mean... In University their, of Massachusetts and uh, Eastern Connecticut. See, I feel like if we hit yeah, like, up RTI. like an Eastern Connecticut State University, maybe we could land <laughs> one there, right? Yeah. Nothing against the gerbils or whatever they are oh. but what i'm thinking is we have our friend in tennessee who's a a professor down there i don't know what school I need some kind of but honorary maybe he something. could give us a we could go speak to his class and we could get an honorary applebee's gift certificate something. for dinner when we're done talking <laughs> but presented from the school yeah i think that would put us on the path to getting these great things from everyone else all right anyways awards do you want to talk about uh, awards yeah i'm there's there's like too many to mention oh my god so 2004 he got the nasa distinguished public service medal and this is the highest award that a civilian can receive as recognition from nasa yeah which is crazy um the other one was he got the critics choice award for the best reality tv host in 2014 i thought that was kind of funny that those two are lumped into the same yeah, category I, I, yeah they are a little bit but I, I just i just thought that was interesting he got uh an, another one it was a fun fact so he got the sexiest well that's not a, that was just an honor they gave oh, it him. was okay he was the sexiest astrophysicist alive by people magazine in 2000 yeah, some of the others that actually mean something <laughs> would be the Cosmos Award in 2015. Now, this is from the Planetary Society, so I'm guessing it's for uh, his work at the Planetarium, yep, yep. right? And then also in 2017, the Stephen Hawking Medal for Science Communication. That's probably a pretty important one. I feel like it's probably an important one, and it also kind of sets the tone for where we should be looking at, or how we should be looking at him. It's for the science communication part. And he does a great job of building awareness. Yeah. So Fit Another one, 2000, 2001, when mm -hmm. was it? Uh, he was named, uh, where was it? I was just looking at it. Um, 2004, uh, he was in the top 50 most important African-American researchers in science. Yeah, that was impressive as well. Uh, 2007, the Times 100 voted... Him as one of the most 100 most influential people in the world. They say persons in the world because that's how they talk, but okay. I say people. But I think that's funny because in 2001, he was in the Tech 100, 100 most influential, influential technology leaders in New York. And then by 2007, he was one of the top 100 most influential people in the world. That's quite a jump in six years. So, so this is a perfect segue for you need to make sure that as an engineer or science or whatever your degree happens to be, kids, no matter what it is, you have to have some personality. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only reason I still have a job. Yeah, because I was really bad at engineering. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't great at it. So Maybe I was. Maybe that's something you don't admit. Maybe you say, I was really great at it, but I also had another strong skill set. Oh. And they won't look back and judge you like and, we're doing right and now. And being self-deprecating is fun anyways. That's true. But I think maybe we should take another break for this week's uh, Luke's rant. Okay, so uh, I can I so here, so here's my rant. So this goes specifically with this whole Neil deGrasse Tyson thing. Okay. Um I, I NDT. Ooh. Do you think he does that? I mean he should because his name's a mouthful. Okay. So and it's what you mentioned before. It's this Pluto thing. Uh, Pluto. So I grew up 
with Pluto being a planet and Pluto the dog and the cartoons and it Pluto was it, it, it meant something to me you know there were all these planets and Pluto was one of them and that was my reality for I don't know 30 years of my life and I don't know exactly when he pulled this whole Pluto isn't a planet thing uh, but whether he's right or wrong I just felt like it was a bit of a jab to people of my generation and earlier like right now my daughter never even imagined Pluto as a planet they don't even talk about Pluto in school so public school yeah yeah I don't know <laughs> so I, I just feel like this whole Pluto isn't a planet thing is a bit is a bit much for me yeah, I agree. I grew up with Pluto being a planet as well. You did, even though you're did, so young? Even though I'm a baby, yeah. Okay. Maybe they took it away shortly after. Yeah, but I don't know when it happened. I don't know. I don't, I don't like it either. I didn't realize... It's disrespectful when, to when, Pluto. When it did happen, though, I remember when it happened, but I didn't realize he was the one that kind of spearheaded the effort. I didn't either. I found that out just a couple of days ago. Yeah. Could you name all of the planets? Uh, Mars, Venus, Earth... Pluto, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto. <laughs> Did you say Pluto? I didn't say Pluto. Uh, what am I missing? I think you missed Mercury. Mercury. Is it, did you get that one? I, I didn't get okay. Mercury. I, think so you I, got I did them. get all of them. <laughs> I mean, sort of. Pluto included. Yeah, okay. Minus Mercury. So let's move on to some of the other great things he did. He wrote 14 books See, about I astrophysics. The number. So it was 14? I counted. Okay. So it's one of my skills that I'm pretty good at is counting. Uh, let's see. All of them, I thought it was interesting. Well, most of them were in his early years because that's when he did all of his real work, right? Merlin's Tour of the Universe. But even back in 89... Merlin's tour of the universe? That doesn't sound like an no. astrophysicist, right? No. Uh, just visiting this planet in 89 or 98. These all have like that astrophysics for the normal person kind of tone. Like right? I would like the, the title's catchy. The title's catchy, yes. Welcome to the universe. Astrophysics for people in a hurry. Now, I get it that that's a catchy title or like breaking it down for us stupid people. But I still wouldn't read that. No. If you put astrophysics in the title, I'm no, out. No, no. Now, most importantly, unless yes. you have something else about it. No, books, I don't. I know we where have you're going the with filmography. This. Yeah. And this is where uh, I, I feel like we need to go in life. So he hosted a number of shows. Nova Science Now, 2006 to 11. And Nova, The Pluto Files was the episode that he was in. <laughs> Makes me mad. And he was the host. Cosmos, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. which was what the revitalization of, of the, the Carl show, Sagan, or the, yep. the the respin of it. Star Talk, which we talked about, which was a TV show for a while and is still going on. And he also narrated Food Evolution, which I like. The most important, though, I have highlighted here, yet to come out, I believe, he is going to be Merlin. I think that's correct. In the Last Sharknado, it's about time. So this man is all about just the money grab, well, right? Well, so. I, Sharknado? Well, yeah. Have you ever seen a Sharknado movie? They're pretty bad. They are terrible. So he's also been, and, and he's, he, he does the rounds because he's the personality for he that is. community. So he's been on Colbert. He's been on yeah. Late Night. He's been on Jimmy Fallon, NPR, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, the Joe Rogan. He just did a Joe Rogan experience where he dogged flat earthers, which as a flat earther, I'm a little <laughs> offended because uh, I've never... I've never seen the globe personally. Um, he was on Stargate Atlantis, The Big Bang Theory. He, Which is a good one. He routinely does Reddit AMAs, Ask Me Anything. In the one I totally forgot about, and I watched the clip this morning, he was in Batman versus Superman. I saw that. And in the movie, he was on TV giving his opinion about what it means that Superman is an alien and we're not alone in this universe uh -huh. kind of thing. It was actually pretty, and he played himself. Yeah, so and that's pretty was, cool. He well, was being all, you know. A lot of the things that we're mentioning, so other than the ones that he was narrating or hosting, he plays as himself because he's so well known for that yeah. personality that and that big old Marina his yep. that he can do that, which I think we need to get to is being ourselves on these shows. Okay. Uh, I see that you named shows different than I did, other okay. than Batman versus Superman. I saw he was on Family Guy as himself. Bojack Horseman, if you've ever seen that, he was as himself. He was also in Zoolander 2. I, I, I tried finding so that he was clip. Shooting I couldn't for the find scar, it. For Zoolander 2? Yeah, I couldn't find it. Do you it. like Zoolander? I thought the first one was, eh. 
There were a couple funny parts. Okay. Will Ferrell made the movie, so. <laughs> That's pretty good. As usual. And uh, he was in The Simpsons as himself. I also just started watching this show. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's on Netflix. It's by the guy that made The Simpsons. And it's like exactly The Simpsons, but in medieval but time. Like Disenchanted, I think it's called. Okay. But anyway, so he's been in all of these shows, which is cool as well, because I'm sure he made a lot of money on that as well. Yeah. He's yeah. he, he's not hurting for the cash. No. So do you have any other information before I get into a fun game to play, and then we can do our final takes on him. Okay, so I got one uh, last fun fact. Okay, let's hear it. So um, t- when Titanic was released uh, in 1997, uh-huh. uh, Tyson wrote to director James Cameron, and he basically had a uh, an issue with the night sky in the scene where he's oh, leaning over yes. the bow and the stars weren't accurate based off of where the ship was and blah 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 so james cameron blows him off he sees him at like a press event and he's like yo james you did this wrong and he kind of blew him off again and then finally the whenever they did the re-release uh, back in 2012 they act the post-production team called him for advice on <laughs> setting up the proper serious? stars and so what they did they must have green screened the you know the, the the night sky out in that scene and they put in the accurately represented star alignment oh uh, that's in the ridiculous. 2012 release isn't that crazy that really is that's that's really that's my funny. last fun fact i feel like that's a great way to just like grab some attention yeah. So before I get into our game, okay. I do want to complain a little bit about like if you follow this dude on Twitter, he he says some pretty I don't know if it's just because he does have a little bit of a disconnect with reality or what, but he says some things that are very audacious. Yeah, I think is the word pretentious and th- maybe not pretentious, but like the way he comes off is like, oh, actually, blah 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 blah. Like he always has to like correct people. It yeah, seems. the thing and that I, I like the it. thing that I don't like about him super smart i get all of his background and and all that i feel like you can agree to disagree and we can have different opinions like if i don't believe something and you believe it i feel like he doesn't do like it's like oh no you're wrong this is fact and and that's it well if it is a fact but he does that with literally everything and I, I, I think there's certain things out there that we're not 100% sure of that we need to think about. And, you know, having differences of opinions is a good thing. So th- that's my biggest thing. There is a bit of ego that comes with him, I think. Yeah. So. All right. Here we go. The I'm game on. we're playing. Don't look at my screen. I'm, I, I am literally blocking my eyes right now. I call it NDT or a movie. Okay. It's quotes. Shoot. For me, I am driving by two main philosophies. No more today about the world than I knew yesterday, and lessen the suffering of others. That's a movie. That is Neil. What? Because that's how he talks. Lessing, lessening the suffering of others? We are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, to the rest of the universe atomically. I think I just heard him say that one recently on a clip I watched, so that's Neil. Very good. We spend the first year of our child's life teaching it to walk and talk, and the rest of its life to shut up and sit down. Your voiceover is amazing, by the way. Thank with you. That. Um, that's a movie. That is Neil. What? Are you tricking me? Are these all Neil? Well, we're going to find out. Oh, okay, go. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaurs. God creates man. Man destroys God. Man creates dinosaurs. Whoa, that is deep. That is definitely not Neil because I'm fairly certain he calls himself uh, an agnostic where he believes nothing. So he wouldn't oh, even say the word look God. Look at you. So that I'm fairly... is, in fact, Jurassic Park. Okay. I thought so. <laughs> Curious that we spend more time congr- congratulating people who have succeeded than encouraging people who have not. Hmm. I'm fairly certain that was Dwayne the Rock Johnson. It was Dwayne. No, that was Neil, the DeGrasse Tyson. I love this game, by the way. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you. That was George W. Bush in his Why inauguration speech, for things? sure. That was Lord of the Rings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, a couple more. 
Shoot. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? This, Breaking the rules. Ooh. Uh, that was Fast and the Furious, Vin Diesel. Close. It was Harry Potter. Okay. It was Hermione Granger. Oh, okay. should have known that one. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. That's Neil. That was Neil. Okay. Uh, let's see here. A short one. There is no shame in not knowing. The problem arises when irrational thought and a and attendant behavior fill the vacuum left by ignorance. Oh, wow. Uh, Kim Jong-un. That was Neil. 1967. That was Neil. 1967. I, 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 wow. I don't know. This was fun. I love this One game. more. Please. What I do is not up to you. Whoa. That is like really Do you think deep. that's Neil? Or do you think that's someone else? from? That, that's, that's not Neil. That is Wonder Woman, in fact, <laughs> which I think people might think of Neil as Wonder Woman. No, that's say, not. True. Say that one again. What, one more time. What 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 I what I do is oh. what I do is not up to oh, you. Oh, that's right. That's whenever. Okay, I do remember that from the movie now. Ooh, one more. Okay. Do or do not. There is no try. Oh, that's my boy Yoda. <laughs> that's Yoda. Okay. Since it's on your wall, on I wall. figured I'd have to add that one in there. Man, I have so many more. But let's take our, our final take here on Neil. Okay, so here's my take. Um, I like him. I think he's done a pretty decent service to you know the science, engineering, NASA, just the general you know interest and excitement in technology and science and space and engineering. I, I do wish he did it with a little less of his bravado. I like that word. Yeah. So I went above and beyond to try and figure out what the people feel about him. Ooh. So I reached out to my, what we'll call the closest thing to an astrophysicist that I know. And I think I've talked to him, talked about him on the show before. He went to Penn State for astrophysics. So for he is an astrophysicist. Super smart. Okay. Well, he has his bachelor's in it. Okay. But then he was, I, I, if I remember correctly, he was angry because he didn't get into Berkeley because a 4.0 wasn't good enough to get in there. I don't know how Alrighty. that works. But he ended up going to Columbia and ah. all, you know, whatever. But I asked him, okay, almost an astrophysicist, what do you think about the guy? And I kind of sassed him a little bit. Okay. And we'll call this guy Sausage Sub. So Sausage Sub says... <laughs> sausage Sub. Uh, <laughs> so I can explain that later. Anyway, Sausage Sub says, you know what? I actually like the guy. And he basically breaks down what we were kind of getting to, that he does a great job of getting people to talk about topics that they otherwise wouldn't be interested in or aware of, as well as breaking complex topics down for the common folk mm -hmm. like us, like dummies. And then I thought about it as I was reading his reply, and I thought, you know what? Neil's basically just unprofessional engineering, but he's like unprofessional astrophysics. Yeah. We try and take topics that other people might not think are interesting or want to talk about and break them down so that people even dumber than us can understand it. <laughs> so I feel like Neil and I, I'm not sure if that's and maybe Neil say. and you, are pretty much, you know, all the same. I feel like we need to reach out, do a little at Neil deGrasse Tyson, and uh, see if he wants to do a little collaboration with us. I, I think that's fair. We'll get on Star Talk. We'll get him on the show. Yeah. It'll be amazing. I think it would be great. I bet he thinks so as well. Neil, if you're listening, call me. After you listen, of course. We yes. know you will be. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, because this is what it all comes down to, he still has over 12 million Twitter followers, and he let us know that he only lost about 100,000 followers in the great Twitter purge of 2018 that just happened. Because, yes, he did tweet about that. Because uh, that's the kind that's of guy he, he is. So, anyways, I think that's all there is about Neil. I think you did a, an okay job on the game we played. And... Uh, I guess until next time. See ya.